Hey guys, welcome to my channel, Realm of Ori. In this video, we will continue with Volume 12, Interlude, The Internal Affairs of the Empire. And before we start, this video contains spoilers from the anime and manga series. And by the way guys, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel and click on the bell icon to get notifications for upcoming videos. So without further ado, let's get into the video. The Eastern Empire, one of the oldest nations in the world. It was more formally known as the Nazca Namriam Ulmeria United Eastern Empire. The history of the empire was said to be ancient, and that its foundations were laid out by a nation as far back as 2000 years ago. The long-standing minor kingdom of Nazca gradually absorbed the large nations of the magic kingdom of Namriam in the eastern union of Ulmeria, thus giving birth to the empire known today. Its overwhelming military power was its backbone. During the past 2000 years, under the reign of the uniting emperor Rudra Nam Ul Nazca, the empire grew immensely powerful, quashing any signs of rebellion from the nations they had absorbed. It acted as the hegemonic power, dominating these states. This was the truth behind the Nazca Namriam Ulmeri a united eastern empire, commonly referred to as the Eastern Empire. The emperor could be described as an absolutist and was born from a pure bloodline of overlords who all passed down the name, Rudra. There was a rumor going around among the citizens of the empire, pertaining to the reason why they had yet to begin their invasion of the great Jura forest. The reason many believed, the empire had not finished preparing. Around 350 years ago, an attempt to subdue the storm dragon Veldora failed, and a city was destroyed in the process. Those who had provoked the capricious dragon had no time to regret it, as they shared the same fate as that city. It had been the largest city of the empire at the time, boasting a population over a hundred thousand, and was a fortress city adjacent to the eastern side of the great Jura forest. It had been built over a hundred years to serve as a bridgehead to invade the forest. They had hoped to turn the city into a military stronghold in order to break through the forest and further expand the empire's territories. Driven by this ambition, the military at the time began to draft an assault plan. They had to cross the great Jura forest. They had spent the past century longing for this opportunity. They were already a prosperous nation, and so there was only one reason why they hoped to expand their territories further, it was their emperor's wish. There was no other reason, and none of the empire's citizens had any complaints. Time passed, and in the present day, the empire found itself in a state of limbo. They had finally recovered from Veldora's blow, however, the emperor had yet to give his permission to invade. Any act of invasion towards the great Jura forest was strictly prohibited. After 350 years, they had rebuilt their power once more, waiting for the right opportunity to strike. Within the empire, the political department and the military department were the left and right hands of the emperor, he had both political dominance and military command, holding absolute authority. Within the political department, the nobles within the empire were organized into the house of peers and enjoyed extraordinary authority. Yet it was merely superficial, in reality, these nobles had no actual decision-making power. They merely enjoyed the honor and privilege, while staying beholden to the emperor's will. At most, they were just bureaucrats. Up next is the military department. The supreme decision-making power of the military did not belong to the nation, but the emperor. All of the empire's military power was centered on the emperor. Moving on, let us have a look at the military strength of the empire. The structure of their military could be roughly divided into three major corps. The armored corps, an army modified by armored technicians consisting of mainly mechanized troops. The magic beast corps, an army consisting of all sorts of magic beasts captured by the empire from various regions across the world, within their domain and otherwise. The mixed corps, a cesspool where non-standard mechanized troops and uncontrollable, ferocious magic beasts were dumped, loosely resembling an army. Unlike the western nations, which focused its military power on swords and magic, the empire was pioneering a new era with magic and science. Someone had seen potential in the knowledge brought from the other worlds, an archmage, one who had lived for a long time within the palace, named Gadra. Every time his life was about to come to an end, he would undergo the secret ritual he invented, the mystic art of reincarnation, in order to rewind his lifespan. It was this ability that allowed him to study otherworlders over many lifetimes. Gadra also appealed to the emperor on the practical use of otherworlders and was given the permission to do as he wished with them. Some of these otherworlders possessed unusual abilities, and some possessed vast knowledge. The empire had abandoned the use of knights. Fighting on horseback had long since become obsolete, and in its place, battles were fought with modernized weaponry. 
soldiers who replaced their flesh and bones with steel and machinery were called mechanites, and they soon played pivotal roles in the empire's war force. The armored corps, the main force of the empire, strongly exemplified this feature. In addition, the Magic Beast Corps also cleverly used the knowledge of the other worlds. Having gained this knowledge from the otherworlders, the Empire was able to analyze the strength of the Magic Beasts. They even went a step further in their research. As for the Mixed Corps, it consisted of many powerful otherworlders. Every one of them had awakened their unique skills. They were a force to be reckoned with. However, separate to the three main core Gadra developed, there was another group in charge of protecting the Emperor. This group was, at most, the size of a company, which was a hundred men. It was called the Imperial Guardians. The members were called Imperial Knights. The Imperial Knights of the Imperial Guardians were the elite of the elite, hand-picked from each of the core. Among them were otherworlders, which only further proved their commitment to the credo that power is everything, by disregarding any prejudice over a person's home country. In conclusion, there were four military corps within the empire. To be the commanding general of these corps, one had to demonstrate adequate military prowess to force those below into obedience. They had to make sure that everyone recognized why they were the strongest within the empire. This was done through competition for ranks, a rank battle, within the empire's military. So long as the battle was supervised by a neutral third party, this system allowed a lower-ranking individual to challenge his superior. In other words, it allowed insubordination. Since superior officers were allowed to kill their challengers, these challenges had to be treated with caution. The challenger had to utilize an overwhelming amount of strength in order to make their opponent admit defeat. This system was very much in line with the empire's philosophy, power is everything. This was how the rankings within the empire were decided. However, Gadra was exempted from this rule. Due to his special position, he was like a foreigner to the empire. Those who wished to climb the ranks of office were given equal opportunity. That was why those who truly possessed strength would not go unnoticed. Everyone continuously honed their skills, eager to demonstrate their talents. Yet as time passed, an anomaly appeared in the empire. For the first time in several decades, a new face took the place of an old corps commander. With a feat that had seemed unfeasible, one man brought the disjointed mixed corps together under a single, strong will. He had been a part of the corps for less than a year, but the rate of his progress was unprecedented, beyond all reason. Following triumph after triumph, defeating countless experienced warriors, this young man had managed to climb to one of the empire's top positions. His name was Yuki Kagurazaka. With the rise of Yuki, things were about to escalate rapidly.